Welcome to A Life in Film. I'm Elliot James Langer, German actor, writer and apparently a podcaster, and I love film. This is the podcast that we ask our guests from in front and behind the camera, how did they get their foot in the door? What was the key to unlocking their success? What's their story? Previous guests include Toby Jones, Hugh Bonneville, casting director Sophie Holland, Scott Adkins and Phil Dunster. Today's guest is Jennifer Houston the three-time Emmy Award-winning casting director of Orange is the New Black, HBO's Girls, and Steven Spielberg's produced The Pacific. We talk about the do's and don'ts that actors should know before auditioning for her, how she worked her way up from an assistant on movies such as Zoolander to becoming the well-respected casting director she is today, with movies such as Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World and Oscar-nominated movie Can You Ever Forgive Me, how she found her feet while working on Gangs of New York with Martin Scorsese, her love of Michael Keaton and why she cast him in hit comedy The Other Guys alongside Will Farrell and Mark Wahlberg. And of course we discuss her most embarrassing casting moment. It's a life and fail. 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 I'm not gonna make this all about me, but I'll tell you a little story. Let's make I'd rather make it all about you. This is what I do. If you come into my room, like before we even start, like before we start auditioning or anything, I'm just like, what's your deal? Tell me about you. Where are you from? What, what's, oh, what's going on? Cool. Oh, that's well, nice. Most... It eases people up, doesn't it? Well, of course, because they'll do their best work if they're if they're relaxed, you know, and they feel mm-hmm. comfortable. So that's always something that's really important to me is make you feel as comfortable as possible and then tr- trick you into doing a really good audition without being nervous. That is the tricky thing. I find that because I'm dyslexic, so I really par- I get paranoid about learning the lines and getting the lines correct. Well, tell the casting people that you're dyslexic. I mean, I'm extremely uh, sensitive to that, and I and I, you know, I want to make sure that the actor doesn't think that that's going to hinder. Like, we'll we'll get it right. Do you know what I mean? If you mess yeah, up a yeah, word, yeah. it's fine. Uh, you should. I mean, I I hope other casting directors are as amenable to dyslexic as, as I am. But um, uh, I, think, I think I don't that- think you should be ashamed of it. I think it's part of you know just what we do I mean you have to read a script you're reading somebody else's words so mm-hmm. and it takes you longer I found most dyslexic actors have to memorize everything yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. I can't go into an audition like you know some actors can like just pick up a script and sides. read it yeah no yeah. way not a yeah. chance I would I'd be like oh, oh, trying to read it yeah um yeah. I'd go straight back to being at school and having to stand at the front of the class reading <laughs> no, something no. you know just to what cut did they out do to you know. you Elliot what did they do to you <laughs> they laugh <laughs> Those mean British boys. That's a fear for me, and I'm. I, there's a lot of obviously. I'm not the only dyslexic actor. There's a huge amount of actors that a are dyslexic. A huge amount, and and um, very successful ones too. Exactly, Tom Cruise. No, that's there you like go. Kind of you know straight away top of the mountain there. But um, no, I mean I started off with TV, so I did I did um, Hollyoaks, but my audition for Hall- that. Oh, you did yeah, Hollyoaks. I did, okay, yeah. I did Hollyoaks, but the character was kind of ripped straight from Skins. And the um the funny thing was that the audition my agent put me for was like a it, it was a role that was like, it was like a one episode he was meant to be in like one or two scenes and I was completely wrong for it I was twenty one yeah. I was like really skinny and I was going in for this role that was meant to be like this big bulky muscly guy and he was meant to be a bodybuilder that was essentially the part and I was just like I mean I'll I'll go in because like yeah I'll give it a good who, who casts who casts that. Um, so back then um, it was a lady called Debbie Grain who I don't know if this was like obviously I'm 35 now so this this is when I was 19 a long time ago I'm 48 as of December 31st I was 48 I just turned 48 so I would have never have guessed that at all we both oh why because I'm so because I'm a vampire (laughs) because I don't go out in the sun so that's the issue Uh, that's the that's the the, the the, uh, yeah and also if you're casting director you're like a you're like a mole and you're always indoors. You're never outside. You're never casting outside. You're in the office 12 hours a day mm-hmm. under fluorescent lights. So that, that's my, that's my secret. That's the key. Um, Stay out of the light. Listen no to sunlight. And you, and you leave and you, you go in at like kind of in the later morning, like around maybe nine or 10, but you don't mm-hmm. leave till it's dark out. So your face never sees direct sunlight. So, yeah, so you that, went in, that... so, so they, so you, they liked, well, I mean, that's a great, that's a very good casting director bringing you in for something that's against type, at least how it's written. And, um, and you were the best candidate for it, you know? That, well, no, this is the weird thing, right? So what? 
I went in and, and they were seeing so many people for this part that we basically all went in in fives and then we just lined up. Okay, I've never and done that before. That must be some British thing. Uh, I don't think it's even, I've never seen it before or since. So it was obviously, uh, they were like looking for a look, I guess. And well, um, I mean, they do that in commercials probably. And like, yeah, it felt more like a commercial. Thing, but... Yeah, it yeah. felt more like that. But I didn't get the part. So essentially oh. I went in there, I stood there with these five other guys. And then just as we were about to leave, I just remember thinking, how can I stand out? Like we just had to stand there and say one line. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm never. Do you remember you know, what how... the line was? Do you remember what the line was? I can't remember what it was. It was something oh, really simple, on. just like you a short line. It. No, I honestly don't. But I remember what I, I, I basically, as I was leaving, I thought I need to, I need to do something to stand out. And I oh made God, a joke. What did you do? It was a terrible joke that I've actually used since because I thought it might work again. Um, something about because there was a whole line. But has produced, it? But has mm, it, Elliot? Mm, I don't yeah. think so. I think it's backfired. Yeah, I think I've stopped using it now. It was so. <laughs> what was it? it wasn't even funny, but the casting director like laughed and okay. And then I kind of you know got to sort of be like oh and have a moment, a very brief moment. Anyway, I left the audition room and. Two months later, still heard nothing. So I was like, I haven't, you know, they were filming well, didn't it. Get that, yeah. Didn't get that. <laughs> and then I remember I was in the car with my mum going up. She's a makeup artist and I was driving to the BBC with her. And I was mm -hmm. going with her because I was like, I've got nothing to do. I'll come with you. And I was out of work, actor struggling. And and um, I get this call from my agent and my agent's like, I, uh, I, don't, I don't really know what, what you've done here. But basically the part you went for, you didn't get. But they're yeah. offering you a three month contract and they've written you a part. So I was, I was like, no, what? that happens. Yeah, that happens. That's amazing. It was, I, I was, I was my first sort of big job, and then I ended up doing it for a year and a half. So it was like, yeah, it was the craziest thing. And I realized now how lucky that was. That was like absolute fluke. Um, but since then, I've gone off and I, I've done uh, feature films. So I've been doing more films. Um, the first film I did was Northern Soul, which was like this. Um, it's a period film set in the seventies about Northern soul music. And it was oh, my what? first lead in a, in a feature. And it was again, a lot of luck. It was my, um, I was doing a modeling job and I was, again, this is when I was like 22 did this job. And I, I met this photographer and she was writing this script called Northern soul. And she just uh -huh. said to me, she was like, you look like John Clark, like proper, she's proper Northern. Like you look like John Clark. And I was like, yeah, uh, um okay <laughs> and so she was like, like i'm gonna send you this you? script yeah i was like uh, yeah. okay and john clark was a fictional character in this film and i stayed in touch with her and over a period of six years we worked on the script worked on the accent it's not my accent i'm from the south and i learned to do this northern soul dancing and six years later we shot the film and it was my first lead and and that was like basically the start of getting feature films so from there i've just been hopefully steadily working fingers that's crossed great. keep that going but um Congratulations. that's a fun kind of way in you know i mean it's it's like yeah. it's not unusual for a good casting director to remember someone for another role i mean that's what we do so that's why actors should always know that even if you're going in for something and you don't get it there's always a chance because that's our our job yeah. is to remember you know and gate and and sort of um clock people and remember them because when another mm. role comes up, it's like, wait a second. Remember that guy who made that really bad joke? That's let's bring in him. Let's <laughs> let's let's just offer it to him because the, the joke was so bad. Um, he's perfect for this this terrible let's, this douchebag that we're casting on the show. Um, yeah, exactly. Is that you how never it went? know. Is, is the guy? Yeah, a I'm pretty sure yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah douchebag. Yeah. So they went. Yep. You. <laughs> Totally. So, I mean, so that's a good thing that actors should always remember, you mm -hmm. know, it's never, even if you don't feel like you're right, or maybe you're bummed after you leave, just, you know, just remember that we're constantly, you know, uh, uh, keeping track of everybody that we see, everybody making, and not just mentally making notes, you know, yeah. and, and trying to really, you know, it, it's, it's our, it's our database in our brain, basically, you know, yeah. so you so made you an impression. Like a well, that's that's what you hope, isn't it? And you hope it's not a bad one as well. You can always slip up and do something, and you think, "Oh, why do I?" I give people other, I give people second chances because sometimes yeah. you're having a bad day, and yeah. um, maybe, and not just in acting, maybe you're just having a bad day, you know, personally, and you come in and maybe mm. you don't give the best impression, and mm -hmm. some people that would turn. I, and so I try to give people a second chance if they come in again and they're and they're an asshole. 
then it's like, okay, this is, who, this is you, you know? Um, but I try to always, I don't, on first meeting an actor, I never just say, you know, uh, they're not, they're not, either they're not right for the role or they're bad because I don't know what's going on, you know, in their lives, you know, and in actors that I see over and over again, I know them, you know, I've been doing this, um, I've been getting paid for it since 1997, but I started in college in, um, in 1996. Smart. So, um, yeah. Oh. And so it's been a really long time. And, uh, mm-hmm. so I know a lot of actors and I know them well, I know the, you know, just like, I know if they're having a bad day and they come in and they're off and I'll be like, okay, what's going on? Let's like, let's, let's figure this out and we'll just get it down. Yeah. And, and you, and it is usually like personal things can really, you know, Mm-mm. um, affect an audition. And that's the, you know, that's the, that's the great part of, um, being with actors in the room and what I miss desperately, you know, with COVID and stuff and that we're still not mm-hmm. in America, um, for the most, I mean, theater is, has gone back, uh, live because mm-hmm. they have to audition people with choreography and musicals and stuff like that. Um, but film and television in America still hasn't gone back. I mean, there's still nothing, there's, no tapes. There's well, no there's tapes some, now. there'll be, it's not all tapes. I do zoom auditions. I try to do zoom auditions with yeah. the actors. So at least I'm, I'm if, it, if it's people that I know it's easy and quick and fast, but to meet new actors, this is my only option. So, Mm-mm. um, so I get to know them a little bit before they read and, and stuff, but I do get a, I, I, I do, I, um, you know, ask for a lot of self tape. Sometimes if it's somebody I know really well, who I know could just nail it and doesn't need any mm. direction from me, just like tape yourself. Fine. I'll, you know, I'm good. Um, yeah. sometimes I have to have, if it's, if it's somebody I don't know, but I see that there's like a little, there's potential there. I'll ask the agent to have them call me or I'll email with the actor and say, and give them the direction that they need. Because, you know, with self tapes, you, you, actors are, are, are taping in a vacuum, you know, and, mm. and that's not fair. <laughs> Cause at least if they come in the room with me, I can give them like the, the, the background of whatever they're reading for, or mm. show them any traps of the scene or, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, yeah. but what I really truly miss is, you know, uh, seeing actors every day and being able to, you know, work with them one-on-one yeah. and, and, and get the scene down exactly like how I need it and just be done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, the, the zoom, the, the self tapes is a big time suck for me. Mm, it must be a completely different process as well when you're not actually in the room and you're not able to direct them quite the And same I know way. If, like if somebody does such a great job, but they just missed one thing. And I knew if they were in the yeah. room with me. I could have just said, okay, one more time, do this. And then I would have had it. Now I have to call the agent and say, okay, I'll have to talk to them on the phone or just give them this note, have them retape. And, you know, mm-hmm. in television, which is, you know, now the majority of work, um, I, there's a, you know, we have deadlines and stuff. It goes really fast. I have a little more, a little more uh, leeway with, uh, with film, but it's still, it's, 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 it's a problem when, somebody does a great job they just have to change one little thing and i have to have them retape and i hate making the actors retape i mean it's, it's not fair it's not not that it's not fair i just feel like you have to um tape yourself you realize that the service that we provide for you of a mm. camera being there a reader you know somebody to read with a background so you look nice good lighting you know we provide all of that for you and now you're all stuck mm. doing it yourself in your like kitchen with like a random curtain up behind you with your iPhone. I mean, it's like, you know, it's really, um, so I, you what, I think it's, it's become more elaborate because I feel like, I don't know. Well, some people get real fancy changed a lot as well. No, yeah, some people, they, people get real fancy with now. it. But like, but that's the thing. I feel like some people, like, honestly, I don't care what your audition looks like. Like you could do it on your iPhone in your car for all I care. Mm. As long as it's a, it's, it's a good, as long as the acting is exactly what I need. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually kind of prefer those sort of like gritty kind of gorilla tapes that are kind of fun, but some people who are very savvy with electron electronics with, um, video or digital, I'm old. So I'm like, uh, electronics and they're good with electronics. Um, but if they're good with, uh, editing or good with computers or good with, um, cameras or iPads, like I'm, you know, I'm like ridiculous. So, uh, they have is I don't think they have an advantage, not not in my world, but there might be directors or casting directors that prefer a pretty shiny tape, you know, so mm-hmm. um, it's very interesting. It's a, it, yeah, the, I always find that sometimes when you've got a tape, or like I saw, well, maybe I shouldn't say this, I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I saw basically, I won't mention who the actor is, but I saw a tape that basically I got from a friend who was of someone quite well known going for quite a big show and yeah. his tape 
was him in his house walking around holding his phone like this and doing it and the tape was he did it his acting was amazing but i was yeah. like god i don't know if i would take the risk no but i would i'm would. doing that you know I, but um, you see the, it, it depends on the casting director for me do that for me i want to yeah. see that i'll take note I wanna of that. See, <laughs> yeah i want to see if it's a car like i mean it's not I, I know it's crazy but if it's like if the scene takes place in a car do it in a car i mean this is even before covid some of the best mm-hmm. auditions I ever received, especially, I mean, a lot of them happened on Glow, which was really interesting, which I loved. I love my cast on Glow so much. A lot of a lot of my favorite um, women and uh, and also Mark Marin uh, had had to self tape because I was in New York mm-hmm. I, before I went out to L.A. Uh, but when I started it, I started it in New York and I really wanted I knew Mark was exactly was the only person I was going to show. So I wanted him to get a dip, like t- tape himself and just nail it, which he did. And he sat at a desk, like like mm-hmm. Sam, like in the scene, mm-hmm. and it was just, it was perfect, you know. And Kate Nash did this cool kind of retro. It was totally eighties. She used like a filter on the camera that made it look like a like an eighties TV screen for her audition. Brilliant. Amazing. Ellen Wong did all her stuff outside. Um, it was, I mean, they were incredible, you know. Mm-hmm. And the creativity for me you know, really, uh, really makes those tapes stand out. You know, I'm not saying be crazy and go to a location or something, but if it's, if it's inherent in the script or the sides or, you know, the whatever, I, I mean, I, 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 I love creativity and I love, mm-hmm. cause you have to understand too. I'm watching talking head after talking head after talking head, thousands of tapes, thousands and thousands. So if somebody mm-hmm. mixes it up a little bit, you know, um, yeah. and if it's, and if it's insane or crazy, I'll just call the just say I lo- I loved it, but if I you know if, depending on who the director or the producer is, you know they're not going to get it. So just have them do it. Same acting, just have mm. them do it. And, like stationary camera, keep it like that. You know, so uh, I'm trying to get you the job. Basically, that's my I want everybody who reads to get the job because it makes my job done. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, that's um, the key. You've got to remember that uh, you, like actors go in there and they tell themselves they're like over like hyperventilating worrying and actually you just need to go in there and you need to give the casting director what they want you just need to do a good job um yeah. and sometimes you get you overcomplicated things um no, and, I'm, and, and, I, it. And, and most i i'm rooting for you you know I, I want i want this part cast i have like 40 other parts i have to cast i you know i want you i want you to come in and nail it whoever you are mm. Mm. you know i have to ask um well we will go back to the beginning and how it will start for you but there's a couple of things i wanted to ask you because some of your some of your casts have been really interesting and i'm just really intrigued to sort of how it came about um you know for, for instance i mean the film can i ever forgive you um if, if, can you ever forgive me sorry that okay. film that that film is brilliant and one of my favorite actors richard e grant obviously he's Mine like too. british royalty um and, he, a, and a wonderful, career. lovely man. I mean, oh, the man, kindest, I, I can imagine. Such a sweet man. And so how did that casting come about? Was Because his career, like, he's had such an amazing career. And I, I mean, I always loved him. In, well, in Withnail like and I, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, you, you, he's he's legend. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. um, Is that so as big that, out in the States? Is that a, a well-known super, film out there? No, to people like me, it is. But no, I don't think but so. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I told you I'm an Anglophile, so it's cool a very here. yeah, it's a very British film. I can't imagine it yes. kind of traveling too well. I've loved Richard. I I don't remember a time I didn't know or love Richard Grant mm. in my life, you know. So um, mm. when I was working on that, there was another actor attached to play that part, and because of scheduling things, um, they fell out. So we were right. sort of like, uh, what are we gonna do, you know? Um, and uh, Richard was uh, was somebody uh, like on the list, of, you know, somebody who. Uh, was really special and met with our director and they hit it off and it couldn't have and and with Melissa couldn't have been better a better mm. combo really mm-hmm. and it was just a it was a blessing that he was available and because again it was kind of a last minute thing because we had somebody oh, already in that yeah. role and um and it worked out the way it was supposed to I mean it really mm. I mean with a part like that we weren't you know we weren't going to read anyone um he was he met with our director to make sure they were still on the same page you know so mm-hmm. um but he does he's not going to read you know obviously he's richard b grant um mm. and so uh so, so that's how it came about you know you're just kind of brain when somebody kind of falls out 
you're just kind of brainstorming who you can offer it to, who's available, who who'd be interested, you know, who'd be great. And uh, and he was our guy. And it was it was no, amazing. I love it. His performance yeah. in that as well as something that I don't feel like I've watched a lot of his movies and I don't feel like I've seen him do the things that he does in that movie. There's like <laughs> obviously a very the, the one scene that really hit me is, you know, the obviously he has a very emotional scene near the end. And yes. I was like, I just think of Richard O'Grant as just being hilarious and just brilliant and everything. But to see that side of him, I was like, wow, that's that's great casting because you're like that. I didn't expect that. Um, Guess what? Guess what? what? He can do anything. (laughs) He's an actor. Act. He can act. He's he's one. He's one of those uh, journeyman actors who can Uh, pretty much deliver whatever you need. But his career like has been amazing. But since that film, he's really like. He's hit another strap. Oh, you know what? You know when? Yeah, I was so excited to see him in Loki. I'm so excited to see him yeah. anywhere. Do you follow he's him? Great. On social, do you follow him on social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've he's, I've actually been in contact with him, trying to get him on here. Oh, trying to he's... trying to get him fit in fit it in at some point. But um, he's so he's so wonderful, and his daughter Olivia is a is a casting director. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's Who's doing also, great as well. She's amazing. Yeah, she works with Lucy mm. Bevan, who are friends, and and yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm so excited for her. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, uh, they're just yeah I've, ne- I've never met, met either of them but I feel like they're lovely people and I hopefully will one day but, Lucy's um, amazing yeah Lucy's amazing I haven't met, met Olivia she joined the uh, Lucy after because I go to I try to go to London a few times mm-hmm. a year before COVID and yeah. uh, I, I've hung out with Lucy I I, I love I have a lot of very good friends like very good friends some are casting directors in London that I I, I miss very much seeing so um, mm-hmm. but Lucy is also just incredible you know, incredible casting director a hilarious woman and and olivia has been working with her and doing an amazing job well yeah i mean lucy bevan does some of the biggest things over here it's, yeah um, yeah she's great she, yeah she's someone i mean all all these like amazing casting directors that um you know i've sometimes i've had the opportunity to go in and meet briefly or had an audition for whatever and then this is what's so great about this i get to like contact these people that i admire and people that they've they've cast these amazing things and get to chat to them and that's why it's it's just so much fun for me this is to be fair it's purely selfish i just get to have a <laughs> chat and then luckily the audience like enjoy listening to it so that's what are you doing really then talking to an american like me then you should be talking to all the brits oh no you see i've i've cleared out i've done all the brits now and now moving okay. across the pond that's it I've, I've 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 cleaned out over here almost so no it's really exciting actually to start this season i've started spreading further over and, and kind of having more americans and i've because i pre-recorded a lot of stuff for this season already oh really um, like, so... you can't say who it is can you I can't because I don't know when this will come out and then I might can, say something. You can you can email it to me. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I, it's very good. Like, obviously, with the award season and coming up, that's something that obviously figuring out that people are going to be there or they've got, you know, they're going to be nominated for this, nominated for that. It's it's a good time right now to have people on, especially, um, you know, getting American guests. So it's oh, exciting. Fun. Um, to have more and more people on but w- when it comes to um Richard Grant and that casting not only that but Melissa Melissa Mene- <laughs> Melissa Melissa, <laughs> Melissa already, McCarthy yeah. she um, was already attached uh, to the film when when I ah, when I came on yeah so but she's like obviously she's primarily known for comedy so again that is like a it's a different role for her um yeah, but, but do, Ellie, do you like mixing so, it up and, it's not that I don't of, I like I don't it's not about mixing it up but comedy is um is exponentially harder to do than drama so um more times than not you'll find that a a comedic actor is a wonderful dramatic actor Mm. so that's none of that surprised me in the least and also she's done she did some movies before um before can you ever forgive me that were were dramatic too you know so very true yeah um, yeah so that didn't surprise me at all She's, she's she's very talented and and like i said if you can do comedy you can do drama you pretty much do anything can't you it's the timing and everything else and... much harder to make people laugh mm-hmm. so. and I, I wanted to right, if we go back um mm-hmm. right to the beginning like before you even like became an associate casting director before everything um what was the kind of what where did that interest come from what how did you kind of one day be like oh i want to be a casting director one day like where did that oh. where did that come from Oh, well, that came a little later. Uh, I always knew since I was uh, probably like seven or eight years old, I, I was I was in love with tele- film mainly and television and films that were shown on television, obviously, because it was the 80s. And uh, the best um, era. 
It's the best era of a film. Best era of a film, the 80s. It is. Love it, it is. And um, I, I loved it. And I, I, I have terrible stage fright. I never wanted to be an actor. That wasn't ever even a consideration. I, I, the only job, like the only things you knew about film back then were there, there were directors mm-hmm. and there were actors. And you knew like there was producers and writers. I was, I didn't think producing or writing was for me. Um, but I, so I thought back then I, I was, I was just like, I'm going to be a director, you know? So, um, so, uh, I went to NYU for cinema studies. I also love film history. Uh, it was very likely I could have taught, I, I would have taught film, um, mm-hmm. or, or I, I wrote for my, my NYU torch. I did, uh, press junkets and film reviews and for the paper. Um, I like that very much. Uh, mm-hmm. and so, but I, so on my every semester I did an internship I was in New York I was at NYU in film and radio and television trying to figure out where I fit in in the business was it going to be on set was it going to be in the office was it going to be a a screen a screen um a script supervisor or an editor you know I didn't know I was trying to trying them all on for size and I was working on a film the summer before my um senior year and I I kind of fell into casting and it was it was a light bulb went off. You know, I remember going home. It was, it was a summer internship. I remember going home and telling my mom, I go, I think I'm supposed to do casting. Cause I, I had a freakish memory for, for actors and films. Like it would be a trick, my friend, like a party trick with my friends. He'd be like, name every film this person's in or uh, what, you know, what, what is this? It was just something that, that my whole family could do actually my mother, my father, mm-hmm. and my sister. And once I realized I could make a living doing that because there weren't, there wasn't the IMDb. There wasn't the internet. You know, there mm-hmm. were, I, when I made a list, it had to come from my brain. I didn't have well, yeah, any I don't other... even think about that. That must have been a completely, oh man, that was so hard. You really have not to Not for of... me. Well, not for me. And that's, and that's why I think the connection, I was like, oh, okay. This is why I can remember all these things. And um, so from that moment on, every, every internship I did was in casting. So, mm-hmm. um, I'd heard about a program. I wanted to visit LA because I, I didn't know where I wanted to end up. And uh, there was a program that I was able to do through Ithaca College and NYU where you got to LA for a semester. So it was the fall semester of my senior year. And um, you can, you, you get school credit for doing an internship out in LA. And I was fortunate enough to get an internship at Universal Television Casting with Megan Brandman. Uh, and she took me under her wing and taught me how it was a paid internship too, which is crazy. And I was nice. on the universal studio lot. Um, well, across the street, there used to be like these, this old building converted building, but, um, and that was a dream come true. Just work walking on a the studio lot. It was my first time in California and like just seeing where all of these old movie stars had tread. And, you know, it was just sort of very, um, sentimental to me and Megan, uh, was wonderful. And she taught me how to cast. She taught me the basics of casting. You know, she taught me uh, all, cause it's, it's, it can be a very clerical job. You know, you also have to learn how to read with actors. I was scared to death to read with an actor. I didn't want to read with an actor. That was like, I couldn't imagine something, anything more terrifying. I told you I have stage fright. Mm-hmm. She forced me to read with actors <laughs> and, um, and I, she was just an, an incredible teacher. And so I got back in January before, before, uh, before graduating in the spring and she called the only thing happening in 1997 in New York uh, with Universal Television was the original Law and Order. So she uh, called over to Suzanne Ryan and Lynn Kressel's office uh, in New York and said, uh, I have a girl. She's trained. You don't have to. She doesn't have to be an intern first. You could just hire her as an assistant if you're ever looking for one. And they were. So when I graduated college, my first job, I was the casting assistant on Law and Order. Wow. Um, and I was there for about a year. And when you work on Law and Order before computers, uh, yeah. before email, before anything, and you're you're calling out appointments, you're opening physical submissions. There's no breakdown services or spot you know, for you spotlight or anything like that. Mm. Um, it's it's trial by fire, and you learn how to do everything really fast, really yeah. well. And uh, it was an amazing experience. Suzanne Ryan was so generous and taught me a lot. So uh, that's how I got there. And then just coincidentally, the offices was universal um, down the hallway. It was a floor on Park Avenue and a building in Park Avenue. The other end of the hallway, the universal owned, the end of the hallway was Kappa Productions, which was Martin Scorsese's production company. 
And Ellen Lewis is his casting director. And Mm. I would see her in the bathroom sometimes or on the elevator. And we'd start talking and she was going to be finished. She was finishing up bringing out the dead at that time, that film. And Mm. she was going to be leaving. Such an underrated movie. (laughs) I love that. I love that film. Yeah. 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 Um, Sorry, carry she on. <laughs> was, no, that's okay. She was finishing that up. So she was going to be leaving uh, Marty's office because she was going on to another film. And uh, she asked if I wanted to work with her. And I was, and I didn't even understand back then that sometimes some casting directors stay with the director forever. And Ellen is one of those. Um, and Martin Scorsese was a hero to me. I, this is all just weird coincidence. I went to NYU because he went to NYU. <laughs> so uh, he was my favorite, he is my favorite filmmaker. So mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, oh, well, she works with, she worked with him on that. That's fine. But I was, I was excited to get into film, but I didn't realize we would be working on Martin Scorsese's movies in the future. Uh, so which I did, I got to work on the aviator and gangs of, uh, New York and, Mm. um, some other things. And, uh, so I went with her and I was with her for a little over seven years because, you know, casting is a, is a, is an apprenticeship sort of, there's no way to Mm. really learn it you don't go to school to learn it. I mean, there is a way to learn it, but you don't go to any proper formal training. So uh, I was with her for, for yeah, seven years. And I learned, I learned all film and I love film, but I also was lucky enough to work with another amazing, I've had amazing uh, mentors in my life. Um, Marsha DeBonis, who's an act character actress and also a casting director. And every pilot season in New York, she would cover it. So I would work with her for three months out of the year. And, um, I got to know every actor in New York because we would just be taping everybody for every pilot. This is when pilot season was proper pilot season. Yeah. And um, so I got to do that. And then I worked on movies the rest of the year. So I got to learn how to do television and film simultaneously, which came in handy when television took over the planet. So, mm. yeah. That's mad. And that's such a young age as well. Going straight into it like that is just. Oh, I was, I was, yeah. I mean, I started, I mean, I started getting paid for what I did when I was 20 yeah amazing and what what is that like to to suddenly be like oh okay i'm now assistant direct uh, assistant casting directing on no, a I, was a casting me. I was a casting, casting associate. associate they they have renamed it now to say associate casting director i guess to sound fancier i was a casting okay. associate and i was, uh, I, was, okay. an, I, was I, I don't assist- know the differences to be there, honest I, no there is no difference it's just kind of like a, a an order of words but i was wow. uh, ellen's casting assistant for yeah. uh probably about three years and then uh, promoted. I mean, in my job really didn't change very much except just the experience mm. to a casting associate with her for the rest of the time. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. That must have been crazy though to to grow up on his films and then be a part of it. You know, it to was suddenly wonderful. be like, wow. It was. It was. It was sort of. By the time I, I felt like I had peaked at twenty five because I was in the same room with uh, Martin Scorsese and filming an actor, and he was coming up by me to to frame the shot and i just thought i can die now like i'm done i was 25 <laughs> I, I was like it. i was like i'm done if, if yeah. nothing else ever happens in my life i'm done now for a quick break are you a writer and director actor costume designer perhaps makeup artist are you interested in camera this is the place to show your journey we want to hear from you how did you start your career has it started yet and perhaps if you're feeling brave Share with us your most embarrassing film-related moment. So slip into our DMs at Life and Film Pod on Instagram. Check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash life and film, where you'll get episodes early and uncut amongst other treats. And don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you enjoy this episode, please leave us a positive rating. Add us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Life and Film Pod, and find our video episodes on YouTube by searching Elliot James Language Life and Film. Essentially, please like and subscribe everything. It makes a huge difference. Thank you. This is also a space we'd like to fill with sponsors and advertisement for like-minded podcasts. So please get in touch. And back to the show. Uh, But you weren't done. You went on and you did so many other things (laughs) as well on top of that. The the, the kind of... the, the. I'm not going to blow you too much to make up your ass, but the, uh, the nah. all the different jobs you've done, you like you can. Um, nah, you don't. The, I don't really. I do not well with. I don't work well with compliments, but yes, continue. So, and, I mean, and my, this is your life. Yes, yes. Yeah, the but the breadth of there's so many different things that you've done. Like you know, going from Scorsese, but like doing comedy to like it's just such a different range of things. Um, it, have you got a particular like? Is there a sort of 
uh, an area that you particularly like casting? Is it comedy or is it drama? Is there is there something well, you're particularly I was always, excited about? I, I, I've been obsessed with comedy as well since I was a, a, a kid. Uh, my father and mother both loved any comedy features. My dad sort of had me sitting and watching, you know, um, Evan Costello and uh, Mel Brooks and, uh, you know, just at stand-ups and Richard Pryor. And uh, my mom had me watching George Carlin and lots of comedy when I was younger. I mean, that was our family pastime was, was sitting in, in the living room, in the, in the family room, watching, um, watching films and comedy, you know. And my mom also had more of a dramatic streak. So she helped me out with that too. But my dad was loved film and lo loved comedy. So I was schooled very early, um, probably with things I probably shouldn't have been watching at such a young age, but, um, but I'm so glad I did. And uh, mm -hmm. so I got their sensibilities. They were pretty young parents, you know, so uh, they were only about 25 when they had me. So we mm -hmm. watched a lot of cool hip things. And um, so I love that more than anything. And I, when I worked with Ellen, Ellen doesn't cast many comedies. So that was seven years of a lot of drama, you know, which is, mm. which is great. But I, I miss comedy. Comedy was a hobby for me. I would go to clubs and stand up and improv. And um, I sort of made a habit of after work because, you know, doing drama sides every day can get really depressing. So mm. after work where our offices were on 26th street, uh, UCB had a theater right down, right down the, the street. So after work to decompress, I would go over to the UCB and just watch cool. comedy shows. And it was mm -hmm. it was purely just a hobby and just, just to keep my sanity. And um, when I decided to go out on my own, I really wanted to do comedy because I loved it so much. And I again, and I was again just really lucky and fortunate that um, Allison Jones, who's you know a uh, you know you don't get more iconic or legendary in terms of comedy casting than her. She was looking for someone in New York to do a search for a super bad. Mm. And she uh, had heard my name from some agents and she called me and, uh, and I was, I was like, I mean, Allison Joe, I, she was like just a name on a screen, but like a legend, like not even, she was just so up there for me in terms of comedy casting. And she called me and she said, you know, I really, I heard, you know, all these UCB kids and, and, uh, you know, I got, I need to, and Greg Matola was directing who I also, I had already known Greg before. So we were having sessions with him and she's like, uh, you, you want to do this? And I was like, work with you. Yes. Oh my God. It wasn't even a question. Um, and we just had an amazing time together and our sensibilities are so similar that after I did that job for her, she just kept hiring me to do New York casting for a lot of her films. And that's how I was introduced to, uh, you know, Will Ferrell and, and, and Gary Sanchez productions and Judd Apatow. And I mean, you name every comedy, uh, Paul Feig, uh, I got to do all the New York stuff for it. And it was through Allison and it was, it, it was, it was dreamy. It is dreamy. It's still great. Yeah. So it is dreamy. there's, there's one dreamy. particular, um, casting, which I absolutely love. Um, the other guys, um, yeah, I did Michael that. Keaton. I did the New York. Yeah. I did the New York casting for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Michael Keaton in that film so is great. just so good. And I feel like he's always been a legend, but I feel like his career had kind of I don't, no, no, I don't... It, it kind of it kind of like plateaued, and then he did the other guys, yeah. and then things started happening. And now again, he's cause... like. Oh yeah. God! Well, um, well, he should be. He always was. He was always. He's, great, he's but, always know. been brilliant. He's always been yeah. brilliant. But his performance in that particularly, and he's not really. He's not even in it that much in comparison to some of the other characters. But he steals the show. I cry with laughter. Steals every, time every I watch scene. scene. When he was I, doing uh, the TL, it was like the TLC or it was Destiny Child or TLC Live. I can't it was remember. TLC. Yeah. Oh, that was when like, and they're like, "Wait, did you just say that on purpose?" What's yeah, happening? Yeah. Did, did you just quote? Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. No, his, his, it's timing, so is, good. his timing is impeccable. So, uh, there's a I'm sorry, I'm just geeking out here. But the, the bit when <laughs> Will Farrell's like on the floor and he's like, Help him, help. he's dying. He just does this really like desperate, it's just oh, it's, it creases me up every time. Yeah, I just love it. But anyway, yeah, no, he, I just wanted, to, I wanted to just shout out to Michael Keaton because, um, always, he's, always he's the important boss. to shout out to Michael Keaton. I know, but to go from that, so then you've got like you know, the Pacific. I mean, you can't get any more <laughs> different than that. I mean, that is like two different realms of, of the industry. Um, 
how <laughs> I mean it's a completely different sort of thing, but when you're casting something like that, it's obviously Spielberg, Tom Hanks, it's it's like this huge production. Well, um, yeah, I was I was the New York Meg Lieberman, who again is probably the most influential person uh, in my career, but I I'd gone to LA and I worked for her for a year. She was she was um she had a television casting director um and an icon and uh I wanted to move to LA for a year and I well I wanted to move to LA permanently. I only made it a year. I missed my family too much. So I came home, but yeah, working with Meg for that year was like going to a graduate school for casting. And we, um, we worked on a couple of shows. Uh, we worked on, we watched a Sean Cassidy show called invasion, which was so fun. Cause it was sci-fi. Cause I also love sci-fi and horror and all those kind of things. So that was great. And then we did a very dramatic mini series for uh, ABC called the path to nine 11, which was based on the, the, the nine 11, official report and you couldn't get more upsetting than that it was it was a it was actually a a wonderful production but abs but there were so many players in it that were sort of exposed it was it was aired once and you can't get it on dvd you can't get it on you can't get it anywhere but that was several months of really because i was in new york when 9 11 happened so it was very hard uh Mm. and then and then i moved back home I miss my family too much. And at that point, I was, it was time for me to go out on my own. You know, I had been working with with amazing people for about nine, nine or 10 years. And that's a huge leap, you know, because there's no um, want ads for casting directors. There's no, you know, there's no way to, we, we don't have agents that submit us or get us jobs. It's just mm-hmm. by word of mouth. So I had to turn down a ton of asso- like casting associate jobs to say, I don't want to be a casting associate anymore. I want to be a casting director and considered for those jobs. Mm-hmm. So it was a scary, it was a scary, a little scary time. Um, and I got, I got some small gigs and, and it was kind of building and the stuff with Allison happened. And, and then I got a little disillusioned and um, I was talking to Meg because who's, who's, who's like family to me. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I should just go back to, to school for primatology. I, I love, I double majored in anthropology. I love science. And uh she, I did not expect that. <laughs> Nobody does, but I do. I love science. Yeah. I was a big, I was a big nerd in school. So, um, and I was like, I should maybe just go back to school because I love I love gorillas. I love studying primatology and stuff. Mm. And she's like, shut up. You're mm-hmm. gonna she's like, just shut up. She's like, this is you're not supposed you're not gonna do you're gonna do casting. And she said, I'm hiring you to the New York casting on the Pacific, which was the companion piece to Band of Brothers. And I said, But I don't think I want to do it. And she's like, You're doing it and it's gonna heal you and you're gonna be okay. And, um, so I did, and it was an amazing experience. I love anything historical. Um, a lot of, one of the characters specifically was from, I'm from New Jersey, was a hero in New Jersey that I had to sort of cast and look for. It was, it was a wonderful experience. And, uh, and we've had casting, New York casting, London casting, Toronto, uh, Canadian casting, um, Meg. And, uh, and it was, I got to hire, I got to cast some of my favorite, uh, New York actors and, Mm-hmm. And it was really, a, it was a wonderful experience, but so that's how that happened. And, oh, okay. um, and again, it's easier to cast dramas than it is to cast comedy. So, mm-hmm. um, there's not a big, it, you know, for me, there's not a huge, um, I, I, I like, I like doing both. I like doing both very much. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's how I got to the Pacific. <laughs> well, and, how did uh, that, the, well, the, um, the contra like changing from comedy like and then going on and doing something like that but becoming also at the same time you you're becoming your own casting director that transition obviously you said it was a bit kind of you weren't sure about it and you might go off and it, do was, ter- else, it was terrifying it was terrifying. how long did like, that take to well it felt like an eternity um <laughs> right but in all honesty it took about four months till somebody called me to do a cast it, it, my first official casting director job was on a a sketch comedy show for MTV called Human Giant. It was um, Rob Hubel and Paul Shear. They were they. It was a, it was actually a UCB uh, troupe. So I had seen them live, and they knew me. And a, a MTV wanted to make the show into wanted to make their live show into a TV sketch show, sort of like Key and Peele or like you know Amy Schumer that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And uh, they hired me, and that was my first foray into television, like television on my own casting. Um, and then, uh, and again, then from there, I think, and then I think super bad, I have to, I would have to look at my MTV. I'm too old to remember all that stuff, but, 
uh, after that, then Allison called me. Then that kind of, it kind of snowballs. It starts to snowball, really. Mm-hmm. And the people are like, oh, Jen knows all these funny people. She knows all these people. So it, you become more of a, of a commodity to anybody who's in L.A. looking for funny New York actors. Mm-hmm. Mm. oh yeah i mean it's crazy the i mean super bad so i super bad <laughs> is one of my favorite movies as well i absolutely love that um i remember trying to get my parents to watch it wow this was when it came out and it just come out on dvd and i was like you gotta watch this and obviously i was at the prime <laughs> age for it and they right. were not <laughs> and they, they were sit- i was like just watch it and i went up i went up upstairs and left them to watch it and i came back down like halfway through <laughs> And it was the scene where um, he's drawing all the di- all the dicks on, oh, on the okay. table. Yes, on the thing, yeah. And I walked in and I the minute I saw that scene, I just realized I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is for them. And I was looking at them and they were like, <laughs> the, and I was like, wrong generation, I think, maybe. But I absolutely, I loved it. Uh, it's such a good film. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was, it, was it was fun to work on anything working on, anything I work on with Allison. We have a blast. She's one of my best friends. So uh, we I mean, have a great that, time. That cast as well now. I mean, they're all doing incredibly well. It's insane to think that that cast was in one film. <laughs> um, but yeah, also um, Scott Pilgrim as well is another one where obviously um, one of the cast members from that went on and did that. And that's a real cult film. Like that, that is It has like, become um, that. Yes, yes. Allison yeah, brought it, me on to that to be the New York casting director. Mm. So we had Allison in LA, me in New York and Robin Cook in Toronto where it was going to shoot. Um, and I sort of, I was a big Edgar Wright fan, a huge one. And I was very excited and I, you know, I knew what Scott Pilgrim was. I'd, I'd seen the Brian O'Malley, you know, the, mm. the, gra- the, the graphic novels and stuff. And, um, and I was very excited to find all these sort of like, you know, uh, characters that were in a comics that, you know, and, and Edgar was very specific and wanted to stay very true to, um the tone and the and and what they look like you know and uh look like mm-hmm. cartoons we you know i was looking at actors who had really big eyes or accentuated features mm-hmm. you know um and we had a great time on that you know so and i was so happy to find so many of our cast in new york uh because i love always putting new york actors into anything you know so mm-hmm. uh yeah we cast uh, out nice. of new york out of yeah out of new york we cast kieran culkin allison pill Mm-hmm. um Mark, Mark Webber was in LA but he was my he was somebody I've, I've known forever Mark and um and uh and Satya Baba uh so as the first evil ex you know so, <laughs> so um, good. Yeah. yeah we had some we had, we had a good time on that that film I mean I, I wasn't familiar with the graphic novel but um I can imagine on paper if you're not familiar with it, it it would be a very you'd be like how is this going to work on a film how is this going to like translate and it just it's such a such a well it just got filtered through Ed, it just got filtered through edgar's brain and you got it that's all that's yeah, what had to edgar wright is just his every single film he does is completely different other than obviously the cornetto trilogy you know sean and the dead <laughs> and that lot but the the rest of his films are just completely he just every time he goes i'm going to do something completely different here um yeah, I love watching his movie. Baby Driver, it's just incredible. What a, what a brilliant film that is. Um, but I want to ask you a little about the process of, of actually casting. And mm-hmm. is there, it's a difficult question because it's the question that every actor wants to know. They're like, how do I what do you want to know? You know, what advice? Like, um, but like coming into a room, like, so, you know, I'm going in there and I've been called in for, for a part. Um, is there any advice you would give? I mean, it's a very broad question, but like, just the simple things. Is there, is there any advice you give to an actor coming in and, and reading for you? Um, I think that the most important thing for an actor to know is that, and I don't know if a lot of actors like to know this, um, but it is true. And I, I've seen it happen a, a lot. Um, you could come in and, and objectively give the best audition out of anybody who reads for the part and not get the role. And I've seen that happen hundreds of times. Um, there are so many variables that are out of the control of the actor um, that you, you, you could be the best and still not get it for, you know, we're dealing with people. So the people who are making the decisions, you might look like their ex-husband or you may look like a bully that was mean to them in school. There's so many like it, variables like that. I mean, also, you know, it's there's a lot of especially in television, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. 
So mm-hmm. they have to agree on one person. And sometimes that that doesn't mean they're going to cast the best person. Um, so I think the advice and that I, I just posted something on Instagram uh, that uh, Judy Dench, it was a reel that Judy uh, Dench, had, yeah. I don't know if you've seen it, but she said. I, I she did see it, yeah. Yeah, she she says it's it's just luck, you know, and it is. Mm. It, it, that's all it is. It's just being in the right place at the right time, and delivering what those people need from you at that moment. And um, I think prepared. I think to be pre- you be prepared for that moment when it comes. That's important, you know. And 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 work mm. on your craft. It's not like it's all luck, you know. But you still have to, you know, study and and um, you know and and study your craft and practice your craft, but. At the end of the day, again, I've been in the rooms where I've seen people give the best audition. They do not get the part. And it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with their acting. So my advice is that Brian Cranston did this really fun, not a fun thing, but he was asked, it's, it's on YouTube. You can look it up about going into an audition. And he said, look, what I do is I just, I go in, I, I have fun. I consider I doing my job. I get to act for like 10 or 20 minutes. This was before he, you know, got huge or whatever. And he goes, I leave the room. I throw the sides in the trash and I forget about it. Mm. And that's the best advice. Don't obsess. Don't be like, did I get it? Don't, don't keep going back on what, did I say something wrong? Did I do something? Did, did I upset someone? You know, it's, it's out of your hands. So let it just be at, literally out of your hands. Take the sides, throw them in the bin and move on. And if you get the part, great. If you don't hear anything, it, it, it's not you, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. No, great advice. I think, I think that's important as well that I think it's kind of, it's in a strange way. It's kind of, that's kind of comforting because you can just have bad luck. You can, you can do everything you can to, to get a role. And at the end of the day, it's just not your day. You're, you come in yeah. the wrong day. Or, or it's just not you your role. Look like sometimes... the brother you're meant to be playing with or yes. whatever. It's... Yeah. And, and sometimes not getting that job leads if you would have gotten that job, you'd have missed out on the career making opportunity that happens, you know, uh, the next week. I've seen that too. I've seen someone not get hired for something that I thought they should have. And then in two weeks book the role that changes their life. And if they would have gotten the job that I did, they wouldn't have been available. Mm, mad. That's scary. That, mad. that is, that is scary. Though. <laughs> yeah. But, it, wow. but that's, the way, that's the way it is, you know? So I guess mm. that's my advice is to just, you know, do your best and, mm. and, and be prepared for when that, that time, when that luck uh, comes into play, mm. but don't, don't beat yourself up over something, you know, little things don't overthink, don't obsess, mm. just go in and also just be, remember that we remember you. So even if you're not right for the part, or even if that director didn't think you were right for the part, maybe our next thing that we're doing, you're exactly right for the part. So it's never for nothing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and this has been really inspiring, genuinely. And I've, I've wasted too much of your time. I feel like we've been on here longer than I said that we would be. But it's okay. um, I, I talked too I, much. It was, I, it was no, 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 no. I, really <laughs> enjoyed it and the, the audience will love it as well like there's so many actors out there that need to hear these things um and and that piece of advice at the end is i think it's a great way to end um okay. and i good. but I, I want i do want to ask you one thing though just to end on a yes. on a stupid note Most embarrassing moments, yeah. i was working on a movie with Allison. Oh, wow. You know okay. straight away what it is. You're like this one. <laughs> oh my god! Because this, this is I still I still have I have this on film, and it's sort of oh wow. I, I, okay, it's it's insane. So uh, I was working on a film with Allison Jones, and um, I was in L.A. and I was working out of her office, and um, <laughs> we were uh, Wilford Brimley was auditioning, and um, I was reading with all the actors. And the director said, Jen, will you go up and um, act uh, next to him so that we can see that so he can work off of you next to him instead of talking like uh, like point of view to the to the camera. And I was like, sure. But it's Wilfred Brimley. You know, and I, do you know who he is in England? Yeah, um, uh, Wilfred Brimley, the name rings a bell. What's he what's he known for? I know that was name. The, I think the Waltons. Uh, Mom. 
I think my mom, and I told you I'm my mom's mom. Mom. She's not answering. Anyway, he's legendary. He did all these commercials for diabetes. I'll look, I'll look him up. I'll look him up. Yeah, I think it's the Waltons. I don't think I'm crazy. Anyway, he's icon. Oh, he was in Cocoon. He was the guy in Cocoon. Um, oh, no, I do know him. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So um, he was, and, and also I just hate the fact that he was auditioning. That makes me sick. But anyway, because I don't think actors, I think attention must be paid. And I don't think actors like that should. Um, so I agree. So I went, you know, so I was like, okay, I'll just stand up there next to him and read his lines to him. I, I told, it was like, Allison, keep me off camera as much as you guys. I don't want to be on camera. Um, and he was reading with pressure. me and I was off book at that point. So it was fine. And, uh, I was standing there next to him and we were doing the scene. And at the end of the scene, we're supposed to walk off. He put me in a headlock and dragged me off the frame of the scene of the, 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 the camera like dragged me by the the head it was hilarious <laughs> oh my god i bet you were like what Some, someone someone like that I as was well like, i was like what the hell just happened i was like did you well for Brimley just put me in a headlock and drag me off frame uh off of, of screen and did it was hilarious floor? allison was on the floor laughing i you know i just didn't even know what to do and i was just like okay thank you but i have it on we we, yeah, we at amazing. that time we were burning it to dvd i have the dvd and it's still like a memory i'll never forget it i mean who who gets put in a headlock by wilford brimley is that something that can be found on the internet or is it just you've got the no. one and copy? no no oh. i would never are you kidding no i just no, wondered if there was a copy of it somewhere that's so funny oh, there's a copy of it i have it and nobody's gonna see it <laughs> and so. no one will ever see it so that's amazing. i was humiliated because the director was in the room there were two producers mm. and i i was I was so embarrassed because I because I didn't know how to react. You know, I was just like, what do you do when somebody, you know, because it's really not, you know, you don't want to you really shouldn't ever touch the casting people. That's something maybe no. you're, no. you know, yeah. Um, but he, you know, he's he's older and and uh, iconic and he just did whatever he wanted. And I think I don't think he thought it was a casting director either. I think he thought I was just like a a, a re an actor, a reader, you know, so um that was quite the most that was probably one of the most embarrassing uh stories and that and, the, and the allison kept it on it kept rolling the camera because yeah. she's hilarious <laughs> she knew and we would die we kept watching it afterwards it was so horrible oh my so, god is that a good story was, no it's great did did he get the role no but it had nothing <laughs> to do with it had it had nothing to do with that so oh, okay that's even funnier though. <laughs> it's no. like, it feels like one of those moments that it's either going to go your way or not. If you didn't. Oh no, no, it, like it had nothing to do with that. No, he. It, we ended up just going in a totally different uh, direction. But, uh, but it it was um, it was it was something. It That's really perfect. was perfect. Yeah. That's a very. <laughs> it's a very strong image as well. <laughs> I'll, maybe i'll send it to you on the side i think i think i have oh, somewhere I, I promise i wouldn't show anyone i'd love to see that that's hilarious <laughs> no thank Allison you so and I much still laugh to this day because we couldn't even believe it was happening oh my god because you, can't tell, you, Brimley, footage, like, though. you can't tell where for you can't tell like let her go you know it was just sort of i had to play it out oh and uh and i'm not a little too long just oh no <laughs> that's amazing Thank you so much for doing this. And you, I mean, you got back so quickly and like, I really appreciate it. And genuinely, it's just lovely to chat to you and like talk about all these things you've done. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. for asking me. I really appreciate it. Mm. All right. Have a great night. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Cheers. Thank you. Here's the laugh and film motherfuckers. Subscribe and like and follow. Thank you to our guest, Jennifer. And thank you to the Casting Society.